to talk to us about is um, on assisted dying, which, as we know, is debated very heavily in the House of Lords this week. Uh, yes, that's right. And the second reading of the assisted dying bill uh, was passed unopposed, which I think will give a lot of hope to people who are suffering. I mean, it's, it's a fascinating issue because once upon a time, um, you know, the, the divide was between the religious who were against it and the secular who were in favour. Uh, and now, actually, uh, the, the goalposts have changed enormously. And there's a lot of religious people like myself or clergy or bishops or, or, or whatever um, who are now saying, well, actually, um, if someone is dying in pain, and those are two crucial aspects, and that they are dying, so it's not like someone who commits suicide and who could have lived on for another 30 or 40 years if they hadn't committed suicide, but they are terminally ill, and they are in pain, and they are mentally competent, and they wish it, then why on earth are we forcing them against their will to, li uh, to live on in pain if they actually want it? And, and I think that is uh, uh, actually not just a humane response, but I would say a religious response, uh, because, you know, we are there to help people, and, and, and if someone is in that terminal condition, and, and they want to let go and say, thank you, God, it's been great so far, but I've had enough and I really don't want to stagger on for the last three or four weeks, uh, then surely it is more religious to allow that to happen. And, and, and that's why, in fact, I'm the chair of the uh, Religious Alliance, which unites people of all faiths as well as leaders of all faiths uh, for it.